I I think I really think we should be on air here. And hi everyone, I'm Nilo, and this is Be Smart on Air interview. Um, we are streaming publicly all over the world through Google Hangouts on Air. Uh, thank God it's Friday, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> and we are yeah. very, very slightly delayed, um, which I think we handled pretty well. Anyway, uh, what's the date? I never know the date. Is it just me? Twenty mm, fourth, um, January twenty fourth. That's it. And um, what else? It might seem a bit strange to thousands of people watching this, uh, the fact that that we are trying to speak English, since I, the Finnish guy, I've been living in Sweden like for thirty years, three zero. Mm -hmm. So I do understand a little bit of of uh, Swedish and. I can make myself understood, roughly. Uh, and so does Yuan, because he is Swedish. I have with me Yuan here. But she has been doing some, quite a bit of cool stuff. So I figured that there might be a chance that uh, others who don't understand Swedish that well might be interested. You never know. So that's uh, why we decided that, heck, let's try it in English. We'll do our best. Yuan, uh, great to have you here. I'm very glad to be here. Thank you. Um, how are we going to play this? Uh, are we like starting with, with uh, baking the homemade bread or what kind <laughs> of tea you prefer or uh, coding or where do we go? Uh, good question. I think, well, baking and tea drinking is pretty straightforward, so that <laughs> might be a good place to start. Uh, let's let's do it like this. Um, before we get into baking and and tea and possibly even coding uh, app script, let's let's fire up the the time machine a little bit. What do you say about that? Sure. Good idea. Um, go back in time and uh, somewhere like uh, heck. Where do you where do you grow up? Uh, so your your present location. That's uh, that's the beautiful Stockholm area, right? Or am I all wrong here? Yeah, it's true. I live in Stockholm, just outside Stockholm, in a, a place called Solna. Uh, I work here. I'm a math and physics teacher in uh, what's probably called upper upper secondary school. So your your students are like something sixteen to eighteen or whatever. Yes. Okay. Yeah, mine are are a bit younger. Mm, got it. Mm. And uh, well, I've been living here in Stockholm for five years, I guess. Mm. That's uh, nothing. If we're in a time machine, let's go back way back <laughs> when you were, you know, like a kid. Where did you grow up? I grew up in the beautiful city of Växjö in southern Sweden. Very yeah. very southern Sweden, I guess. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, compared to Luleå, it's <laughs> very southern. <laughs> I'd guess. And, and my parents are still there. I moved from uh, from Växjö to Uppsala when I uh, started studying at university. And I, well, I had a lot of plans of what I wanted to do. To do. One of them was I wanted to be a theor theoretical physicist to learn about black holes and, and things like that. <laughs> And uh, I managed pretty well. Uh, got a degree in in modern physics. Uh, but then I had an idea about uh, uh, studying journalism because uh, journalism and media is a very strong factor in the society, and I wanted to know more about that. So I did that for a while. For a uh, while. What's what's for a while? Well, a year. Okay. Uh, then I went back to physics because I had an opportunity to do a PhD in physics education, uh, or physics education research. So I did, well, not really that, but half of it uh, in Uppsala as well. So I have what's called a lic licentiate degree in uh, physics education research. Wow. And then, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> then it so happened that I became a journalist and, and started working at a popular science magazine here in Sweden. That led me uh, eventually into working with web because I was not only writing for this magazine but also taking care of their web page. Uh, it was, uh, well, and that got me started on web development and web programming. 
and I got heavily involved in something called Drupal, a uh, open source content management system that is really fun to work with. And that eventually led me into being a, a web developer professionally at a company called Node One, also here in Stockholm. All right. And I was doing web development for uh, two years professionally, I guess, two or three years uh, before I eventually decided that now is the time I am finally going to be a teacher for real. Why on earth would you do that? I mean, your background is really, I'd, I'd say, not quite the typical one for a teacher. I mean, <laughs> making making the big money in 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 within the business sector and and then going into teaching. Um, how come? Uh, well, I've always known that I wanted to be a teacher. School and education is something that I care about and are I'm heavily involved with, and I have always been more or less. So I knew that I was going to be a teacher and I've known that for, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. Uh, and that meant I also knew that I wasn't going to do web development uh, for the rest of my life. So sooner or later I had to make that choice and I had, well, something that kicked me in the butt saying that it's time to do this now. So I, I started. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You you aren't you aren't exactly extremely old either. How young are you? How young am I? I am uh, thirty three years young. Heaven's sake! Whew. You leave me speechless. Almost. <laughs> well. Oh. It's, I've I've tried a few things uh, so, so far in my life, but I've only done them for like two years each, which means I've. Well, got a chance to learn a bit about what it's like to be a science journalist and a bit about what it's like to do uh, education research uh, and so on and web development. But I'm not really, uh, I'm not that good at any of it actually. Uh, well, um, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> what about teaching? Well, you, you've been trying a little bit about little bit of teaching as well. A couple of years. What did you say? Yeah, so this is my. What is it? Third or fourth semester right now? So I'm on my second year of of teaching, mm -hmm. uh, and it's pretty interesting when I compare this work to my previous jobs, because I feel now after one and a half year that I barely know anything about what it's like to be a teacher. <laughs> it's like I'm starting to understand. I've seen a few of the different things I may encounter as a teacher, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, there is much more, many more challenges and many more, much more variety in this work compared to the things I've been doing before. That's really interesting. Uh, we have we have been in touch um, through uh, Google Plus, obviously a bit, uh, mainly through the um, through the the uh, community um, that focuses on on. Uh, what is it? A Google, uh, a certain Google folders. script. Yeah, G plus folders. Here again, Bjorn Bear, and this is for you. You are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, um, you've been doing quite a bit of coding uh, that that uh, is in a, in a way connected to to the G plus folder script. But let's get back to that a little bit later, and okay. and let's get back to some fixed ideas. Uh, you have yours, I have mine. It seems uh, reminding myself of, of the the uh, discussion we had a bit earlier, mm -hmm. and and we could we could um, talk a little bit about that as well. But if we go uh, once again way back in time when you were uh, at school yourself, how how was it? Um, who were you at school? Who was I at school? Well. Um... I was a good student in many aspects. Uh, I'm a quick learner, so I was doing well in most subjects. Uh, uh, I'm also one of those persons who fit into the school system, uh, like yes, some, some do, some some don't. Yeah, yeah, and and if you are one of those who fit into the school system, you you get a lot of benefits from the school. 
both when it comes to social things, but also like uh, um, grading grades, and right. sure. for that matter, learning. I think you learn a lot more if you feel that you fit into school. Um, then was it, was it a happy, were, happy time for you? Uh, was it yeah. a good time for you, your school it, years? It was, especially the, the upper secondary was really great. I guess high school, what's that, that's grade seven through nine, is, I guess, uh, more or less misery for everyone. <laughs> oh, come but, on, it can't be that bad. I've forgotten everything about it anyway. I'm so old, you know, so <laughs> I, can, yeah. I can be honest yeah. and say, it isn't that bad, I just don't remember, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but school was good for me. School was good for me, definitely. Yeah. And yeah. at the end of school, I had this kind of revelation that this thing with grades that we seem to be chasing in school, getting good grades all the time, they don't really matter because I realized that the grades I'm getting, I will have no problems getting into the education I want to go, the program I want to go to at university. And that means I don't really have to care at all about my grades anymore. <laughs> the only thing that's interesting is what I, what I learn and what I do and how I feel in school. And that was interesting. Um, and I've been trying to keep that, um, keep that feeling. And that's what I think also makes me go from being an IT consultant and making money, having a lot of fun, uh, to, to doing something else that I feel is more meaningful, like being a teacher, because uh, uh, this getting more money thing is a bit like uh, going for the grades. You, we are, <laughs> yeah. in some yeah. aspects, cheated into hunting for for grades in school or hunting for money in, in life and um, well if you don't have enough uh, money or if your grades don't won't allow you to do what you like then they are important of course uh, but when you have what you need then I think it's important to to be aware of that there are other things that matter more yeah I guess uh... I guess I can just say that it's well put. <laughs> um, I'm being philosophical here. <laughs> yeah. Heck, why not? My intention. Why yeah. not? Yeah. I got to think about that for a while. Man, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty deep. <laughs> oh, man. It's, well, um, it's easy to, well, in, in Sweden at least, and I guess in many parts of the world, at least the Western world, it's very easy to be caught in your career. You want to make more money, have, have a better title and uh, things like that. If you instead start thinking about, well, maybe I should be working 80%, have one more day off every week. Google style or what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or, or maybe, well, Google, Google pays that uh, fifth day anyway. <laughs> right. That, 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 that does make a difference, doesn't it? That must, does make a difference. But, but you could, maybe you can cut 20% of your salary, have three days off every week, and work four days. And have less money, but be, be better off. Maybe. Yeah, yeah as, as long as you can cope with what you, what you get. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That, that sure, is an I mean, important, very important yeah. factor. Yeah, and it depends what what you mean, uh, what I mean when I say coping. Uh, <laughs> I, I suppose yeah. it means different things to different people. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. What about um, what about teacher studies, you and what do you think about the? I guess the I don't. You could tell a little bit about uh, the way you you pull it off. Uh, your teacher studies. You have you had quite a lot of experience from different things. I guess they helped there as well. Uh, yes, they did. When I started to, to be a teacher, I only had to do one year of studies. Uh, I had all the subjects, the math and physics, and then it should be, it should have been three semesters with uh, uh, teacher studies, uh, but I could cut that down to two since I had uh, uh, done some work with uh, physics education before that, so that was really helpful for me. How did you like it? Um, it was good in many aspects. Uh, and in Sweden, the um, 
uh, teacher education is pretty or very, very theoretical, I would say. Uh, you learn about meta aspects about teaching. You learn about the school's role in the society. You have theories for learning and things like that, but you don't have very much that actually prepares you for the work in the classroom where you meet students. Um, and that, I think, is a shame because uh, when you're done with your teacher training and go to a school, start teaching, then you're not prepared for what you're about to do. No, you are not. At least, uh, well, I, I wasn't either. I, I guess there are those who are, but I sure wasn't. How was it yeah, for you? Um, I, well, I was kind of, pre well, I w no, I wasn't prepared. I did. Some parts I was prepared for. Uh, uh, during the studies, the teacher studies, we, we make, well, we have um, periods going into schools, following teachers, doing some teaching. So uh, everyone who becomes a teacher has done some teaching before, been in a classroom, mm. had uh, uh, lessons. But there is so much difference between having a few lessons with a class and having a full course, meeting students for the first time, taking responsibility for these students, learning the, the things they should learn, and thinking about the whole course, about grades, about uh, social aspects of <laughs> taking care yes, of the sir. students, yep. uh, and everything. And there's, uh, there are also very different time frames. When you're a teacher student, you have, like, this week you should do four lessons uh, and sometimes when you work as a teacher, it's like four lessons per day, which is radically different. It is, yeah. And that's, um, well, that's a challenge. And I, and I think the teacher training should prepare you for the work that you actually should do. And then maybe you should, three years later on, when you've been a teacher for, for some time, go back and have these theoretical aspects so you become more aware about learning theories and the school's democratic uh, role in the society and, well, these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's my take, at least. What do you say about that? I think it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, talking about school, generally speaking, um, in, in Sweden, um, what is wrong with it? Apparently there's something badly, badly wrong because all, all of us read it in the papers and everywhere like yeah. daily. Something is very, very badly wrong. What is it? What is it? Well, should I say what, what it actually is? Yeah. Because of course say I have the answer. <laughs> no, uh, uh, I is, think is it's... There, a... Is there something badly wrong with the Swedish school system? No, I think we should be very aware that the Swedish school system is good. Compared to a lot of things you can find in the world, we are tremendously well off. We have a lot of good things, and that should not be underestimated. We have a lot of things that are not good as well, that we should strive to improve. And my take on it, I'm, this is so difficult as well, because everyone, every single one is in the society above age seven or so has been to school and have their own opinions about what what's right and wrong and how it should be changed. Everyone that, is an expert, huh? Yeah, everyone is an expert. And that makes it kind of difficult when even politicians go into details and say, this is how homework should be treated in schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's... And I think that's one of the problems, partly, that, that too many interfere in how schools are managed and how teaching and learning should be done. But the, the main problem, I think, is a lack of resources. In there is no, uh, mostly time. That uh, teachers don't have time to to do. Uh, I shouldn't say a good job. Most teachers do a great job, but um, very very few teachers have time to do as good job uh, as a good job as they want to do as they would like to do. Very few teachers feel that yes, my time is sufficient for this task that I have. I read, I think this morning, 82% of teachers say that they don't have the time and the resources they need to do an adequate job. And that's, well, that's not good. And, and from my own experience, uh, as a teacher, I, I have had the, 
uh, well, I had better opportunity to do a good job in all my other professions. Yeah. As a teacher, you're supposed to come to school and then maybe you have a few days with mostly meetings and then you should start teaching. Then you should be prepared and have, well, 32 new, new students in each class and maybe you have, for me, four classes at once. Uh, and if that also, if that also is your first year as a, a teacher, then you don't really stand a chance unless you... Um, spend a lot of time uh, of your spare time on your job, uh, you won't be able to do a good job. Do you, do you somehow feel a little bit, how would I put it, uh, let down um, mm. in, in your job comparing to what you were expecting before you, you were in the, in the, in the middle, middle of it? In the, in no. No, I think I knew quite well what I was going into. My, my mother uh, was a teacher before she retired. Oh, I see. I, so you knew, I, you knew exactly. I, I knew quite well. And my, my younger sister is a teacher as well. So you did it anyway. You, you must be, you know, you, you do want some trouble. Or, or what is this all about? Well, I, I think it's important. I think uh, education is probably the most important thing you have in a modern society. And uh, I... I know, I feel that there are so many things that don't work as they should in school, so I think that's one of the most important places to try to do something. And I'm so do, quite ambitious. Do, people, do, do the young people, if we're talking about the young people, I mean, learners obviously are in, in all ages, but if we're talking about the young people, do they learn the important stuff at school? Well, in that's Sweden. a really good question. Um, should they? Yes, they should. I think school should be a place where you learn really important stuff. Uh, and what's the important? Said, what's what's the important stuff then? Yeah, and is it possible to learn the important stuff in the school as it looks today? That's yeah. also an interesting question. Because, yeah. Um, it's it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Also, what I've been uh, hearing from. Uh, from some of my my colleagues in um, in other countries uh, lately, especially in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, their view on on the the well, at least many of 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 those those that I, I uh, those discussion I, uh, discussions I hear um, U.S. teachers um, they find that the the Swedish school system is excellent, just you know, like superb, yeah. And uh, that is kind of uh, jaw dropping to me. It's just, oh, what? Where do you get that from? You know? I I think that is news dissipating slowly, because I I think that view is based on the school as it was. I don't know, maybe twenty years ago. Um, I guess, or maybe they're looking into seeing. Things like school is free for everyone, and we have generally high standards or high um, uh, the the lowest. Well, no, nah, I, I don't know. <laughs> no, actually, I don't know what they're thinking. Me, me neither. Me neither. Um, In Sweden, we talk about the Finnish school system. As right, right. The, the great uh, school. Yeah, I, I believe that that. Um, the way Finland has been been scoring in, in in many many international tests, not just PISA, I think, but but others as well. Uh, in in the past, uh, I think uh, that is well known all over the world as well. Uh, of course, in in the U.S. as well. Mm -hmm. But perhaps I don't know. Perhaps some 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 of the the uh, teachers in other countries they just uh, think that Sweden and Finland is pretty much the same somewhere out there in the. <laughs> Mm -hmm. In the Nordic yeah. area, they are just great, all of them, you know. And uh, yeah. what do you think about? Um, do you do you know the way um, Finnish school system works a little bit? I mean, comparing Sweden and Finland. Uh, a bit, uh, as I understand it, um, you have well in in Finland there are quite a few uh, teachers who are. Uh, have a PhD in their subject, for example, and it mm -hmm. seems that, well, in Sweden, uh, uh, becoming a teacher is like 
third option for quite a few people. They've or, been studying. Or fourth, or fourth, or fifth. Or four, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, oops, I've been uh, studying a lot of things at university and now I can't get a job because I've been studying art history. Well, I can always become a teacher. Yeah, meaning that that the status of of uh, of the teaching profession is is Sweden is is like rock bottom low. Yeah, kind of. And yes. and in Finland, that's my opinion as well. And and that seems to be the way it is. The status mm -hmm. is way up high, and obviously they make a lot better. They have make a lot more money than than, the, than Swedish teachers. Uh, generally. Is that the case? Because I was going to ask. I've, Heard that the salaries are basically the same between uh, Finnish and Swedish schools. It is. I, I wasn't. I'm actually not sure. I figured they were better anyway. But like mm -hmm. in in the European perspective, I think the I think the Swedish wages are really low, say compared to Great Britain or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think there's no no discussion about that. But um, I think. Um, Finnish teachers um, do make more money. Perhaps it's not that yeah. much, but uh, oh well. A couple of questions popping up here. Uh, yeah. Hi Bjorn. We have Bjorn Beren. Bjorn Beren. Uh, it's such a beautiful name, and he always says that I pronounce his name better than he does. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, a quick one from from Bjorn in uh, in the in the states. On the other side of the pond, I like that. It's always better uh, on the other side, and uh, sure, I guess it is. I guess it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's very easy as a Swedish teacher to see all the bad things here. I mean, it's, yeah, it's yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, or what do you think? Uh, is there one major factor apart, additional factor apart from the fact? I mean, still comparing Sweden and Finland, apart from the fact that that the, the status is is completely different in Finland for the teaching profession, way way up high there, is there something else uh, um, that makes a big difference? I I would like to say now this I'm this is not my expertise, so this is mostly opinions, but I'm also connecting it to what Kim is saying, the questions and answers. Twenty years ago or something, the Swedish schools were. Uh, moved from uh, transferred from being governed by the states to governed by cities, and that I think has uh, drastically changed the the way schools work and the way schools are given resources. Um, Oops, I think just a sec. I think uh, I got out of sync with the questions. If if I mess things up with questions popping up somehow strangely, so never mind. Just go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I, I think it makes a difference that uh, the, the cities are funding schools and not uh, that the state is funding schools. Because, um, well, I, this has to do with resources again. I think if uh, schools were funded by the state, you would have more of a uh, well-governed control of it. You will have experts, that people that know what schools need and the schools should have instead of opinions, which is mostly, well, often the case when cities govern schools because uh, politicians in cities are in Sweden mostly, uh, well, hobbyist might be the wrong word, but there are people I, who have... I, I, don't, I don't know if it's the wrong word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, people that have another job and do this politician thing as side, uh, well, that's a side dish. And they have ideas. Some some are great and have know what, uh, well, school research, education research, and what really should uh, be happening in schools, and some have more opinions that they think should, well, govern how schools in their uh, city should be managed. And that's a problem. But basically, I think that teachers have solutions to a lot of the problems that we face and the thing that we need is just the time and sometimes other resources to uh, to solve the problems because we have ideas about to do it. Yeah, and just perhaps we don't need uh, a new curriculum every two years and a completely new framework for, for our work every couple of years and that's, I think, a huge difference between Finland and Sweden. Um, mm. Whatever you say about the, the Finnish way of, of uh, doing it at schools, so they've definitely been working along the 
for better or worse, and it seems in many cases for the better, along the same same lines for many, many years. Um, and yeah. uh, I mean, I don't mean that change is always necessarily you know, like of evil, uh, but if there's continuous change, so you never get your bearings right, then you don't stand a chance, I think. Yeah, yeah I agree. I agree fully. And and yet, I think that teachers in general embrace change. They think, well, when, when teachers see something new, some new method, some new tool, uh, some new research, they generally think, this is interesting. I would like to try this. Absolutely. If it, if it works uh, yes. with the students, if you can really show that this thing works with your students, then yes, go. Yeah. Otherwise, not, I think. Yeah. And that makes sense. I mean... Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, what about the bread? <laughs> what about the bread? Uh, baking, baking the bread. <laughs> baking the bread. That, yeah, that's a really old tradition of mine. <laughs> I'm I'm from you know I'm I'm from Finland, like I've said, and uh, I've been in, in in Sweden for many many years. But Where I must in Finland say that are you from? Southern Finland, uh, hundred percent Finnish speaking area. So when I got um, when I got to Sweden, that was like, uh, oh man, this is incredible. It was 78, huh? 78? Wow. Can it, I is wasn't it possible? Born then. Well, told you, this is the granddad speaking here. Um, <laughs> anyway, I, I could just say it's many, year, it's many years ago. If, if, I, if I say the exact year, it sounds you know, like I'm a dinosaur. I guess I am, anyway. Uh, when, I got he, when I got to Sweden, to Stockholm, so... Um, um, I mean, obviously, I, I knew some Swedish, you know, mm. um, but uh, I had never used my Swedish, and the um, the way we learned language, no, the way we learned, at least the way I uh, learned Swedish those days, uh, there wasn't, well, there weren't that many, many opportunities to practice the language, you know, for real, so... Uh, the first year, more or less, uh, I was just, you know, trying to get the the language right. Mm. And uh, after that, I guess I've, I've uh, made a better job of that, <laughs> especially since I'm teaching Swedish these days. Don't don't tell yeah. anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh well. But like I said, to answer your question, so southern southern Finland and um, no no Swedish anywhere there. <laughs> In quite a bit of English, though. Um, I had lots of contacts uh, in, in English through my sisters and, and uh, their friends and whatnot. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and the bread. When, the I, bread. when I moved to Sweden, the bread, the bread was awful. It was all sweet. You know, there was like these crazy Swedes. They were throwing in sugar everywhere, just like the, the Americans, Bjorn. Just like the Americans. Well, Americans are a bit worse. Uh, but anyway, like sugar in the food, sugar in the sugar, sugar, you know. Oh, man. So I was like, what is this thing? So, uh, yeah. Homemade bread. My wife is great at that. She usually fixes the dough, you know, like sourdough. That's the in thing these days, isn't it? And uh, I'm happy to, to bake it, you know, take care of it when, when she's fixed everything. So that's great. <laughs> How do you yeah. do it? Um, I don't do sourdough. I've tried ooh, that a few times. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> but I, my my reasoning is this: that it's good if uh, bread makes your mouth water, but it's bad if it makes your eyes water. <laughs> oh come on! Uh, come no, on. that was happened to me. Misconception uh, that sourdough, that bread made of sourdough, would be sour. It's not sour. It's just delicious. <laughs> yeah, if you do it right. If you but, do it right. Mm, but agree. seriously, when I tried, a mm -hmm. few of the times it was, well, awful is on the start of it. It's <laughs> inedible. <laughs> okay. yeah. It takes, there are some tricks to that. And actually, being quite honest, I haven't mastered that. My wife has, luckily. So, uh, teamwork, teamwork. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if there are, you know, like quite a few people expecting to get something about coding. We 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 haven't talked anything about the the 
the Apple coding. script, or no, Apple, Jesus, did I say <laughs> that? Did I say Apple script? Did I really say that? There is yeah, such well, a thing, isn't there, like Apple there, script? Yeah, it is, I, um, I think. Apps, it's apps, Google apps script. Have you been, by the way, have you been coding apps, uh, app, Apple script too? Uh, no, no Apple scripts, no uh, Apple scripts. and no no apps for phone either. But no, I would no. like to try to, to do something for mm. uh, for Android. But you are into Google Apps Script. Oh, I got it right, didn't I? Uh, <laughs> yes. How, well, how, I, how I'm did, starting. How to... did you get into that? And um, it was by accident, more or less. I was doing, uh, well, looking for some way to keep track of my students' um, uh, knowledge, their, their progress in school. And I was trying to understand the, the math curriculum and what you're supposed to learn and what you're supposed to be able to do for certain grades and things like that, which ended up in a huge spreadsheet. Uh -huh. and, uh, and I say huge when I, well, that it means... Uh, well, people actually, well, nearly dropped dead when they saw it. That huge. And I thought about either um, either putting the spreadsheet in LibreOffice, the new OpenOffice, or have it on the Google Drive in a Google spreadsheet. And uh, uh, I went for uh, Google Spreadsheets. And then I started trying to update the student sheets with, uh, well, I had one sheet for each student, and that was, well, time consuming, trying to fill in these uh, spreadsheets, one for each student. So I started looking to alternatives, and I found that it's actually possible to write scripts for uh, Google Documents and Google yeah, Files yeah, and Google yeah, right. Drive. Right. And that's how it started. OK. Um, and, and, uh... After a while, somehow, you got into something that has turned into, what, student matrix? Stuff? Student matrix, yeah. Won't you, please, wouldn't you try to explain so that I understand as well? I have, I've been following you guys when you've been talking about that, and I'm not quite sure if I've got it. So go for it. Uh, make it plain and easy so that I can understand. Plain and easy. Okay. Imagine that you have, like... Um, 30 different things you want to keep track of for each student in a class or in five different classes. And you put these in a spreadsheet, saying this, is, uh, this spreadsheet symbolizes the things I want to keep track of uh, that each student can or cannot do in the, in the class. Uh, and it might not be 50, it might be 22, or it might be 200, doesn't really matter, but you put them in a spreadsheet. Uh, and then you want to have some kind of way to say, these 22 students, uh, I want to change the colors of these five cells for these students to green, for example. And instead of doing that in, uh, manually for each uh, uh, spreadsheet, you do it from one place, uh, check five students or 22 students, and say, OK, and then blah, 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 it's updated. Uh, and you can also like read from the spreadsheets and say how are my students doing in these aspects, and you can get uh, summarized stats for that. That was how it started. Hmm. Okay, where is it going now? Now it's going well. It uh, to start with, it was really a hack, something I did to just save myself some time. And then it worked, and I showed it to someone else, and they thought this was interesting and wanted to try it. And eventually, I had to build something that, that was kind of like a nice user interface, or at least not painful user interface. Uh, and eventually, I felt that I want to rewrite this from scratch because it's the code is ugly, the, the method is ugly, uh, and I want to have this code expandable in a way that I don't have right now. I would like to be able to write one small plugin saying that now I would like to be able to uh, insert comments into the spreadsheet for selected students and not have to like copy a lot of code and duplicate code. You just do that. Uh, and that turned into uh, a new version of Student Matrix, which is still in, in beta state, uh, which is 
actually not so much working with spreadsheets, but doing actions, running actions on students. So you could like copy this file to 17 of my uh, 32 students, or give edit permission to five of my students to this selected file, or uh, send an email, or uh, update spreadsheets, or whatever. Okay, D does that cover partly um, kind of functionality that the, the Doctopus script mm -hmm. has? Yes, and also G-class folders. Okay, uh, like G-class folders, is, it's, it's so, so in incredibly simple, so even I understand. I mean, <laughs> just cre creating creating a folder structure that that makes yeah. it easy to keep track of all the all the material that that's been uh, shared with you. Um, yeah. But that stuff you're doing, it's kind of I, I got to perhaps we should have we should have some kind of a, a uh, uh, online demonstration of that sometime. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, I would like that. There are and some it, videos available, but online demonstrations are better because then you can ask questions and and so on. Yeah, uh, perhaps Bjorn Berend would would uh, like to talk to you as well. Um, talking about G-class folders, so uh, I guess yeah. you've heard that that um, Bjorn he's been working together with uh, Andrew Stillman. Stillman, yeah, the the coding wizard. Uh, and uh, Andrew apparently has quite a lot to do, and um, as a result, he doesn't have the time to to put so much time and effort into uh, into GCAS folders, into the the mm -hmm. school mode, more advanced version, if yeah. I got that right, of GCAS folders. And um, uh, no, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with the with the whole thing. Uh, Bjorn will continue with that, if I got it right. Yeah, Bjorn. Uh, but um, not perhaps on that advanced level that, that uh, Andrew has been doing. And um, I'm really interested to hear from, from Bjorn um, what will come out of that. And uh, perhaps you'd like to be part of that discussion, uh, Johan. That would be kind of interesting, I think. I would very much like to, yes. Yeah. And uh, when I say that, uh, said that um, student matrix is partly the same as g class folders or Doctopus. I actually mean that it covers small parts of it and does it in a not very... Well, g class folders and Doctopus are very well made, and I don't intend to, to say that anything I write can, can actually be compared with it. Because... Well, uh, I... I that, uh, heck, it's all good stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all good stuff. Yeah, um, definitely. It's, talking, it's, we've been talking earlier, There, there's always this, this problem uh, with, with passion projects that expand somehow, I don't know if, if you might say out of control, mm -hmm. uh, if they get um, large enough so that when lots of people start using them uh, and all of a sudden you notice that perhaps, I don't know if this is the case with GCAS folders, but you might notice that you're kind of running a, help, a global help desk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> full time or whatever, uh, without getting a penny for that. So I mean, of course, that's that's an impossible situation. Yeah, and also what you started out doing as a hobby because you like doing it, uh, suddenly you realize that there are three thousand people depending on you. Yep, that is kind of uh, that's kind of a tough one, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is. We have a couple of uh, well questions. I don't know responses from from the audience here and <laughs> I go back a little bit uh, it's, it's kind of this questions and answers app it's it's not that easy to cope with uh, for, for several reasons one of them being that my my simultaneous capacity is is uh, like uh, in the pits <laughs> <laughs> but but there are some other other reasons as well uh, anyway I must go back a little bit do I still see that this these comments are voted up and down by people who see them you know so uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't have the host doesn't have full control it's kind of weird or cool whatever you one, but this I just must take this one from from Bjorn. And sometimes it takes a while. Well, I I click the the select button here, you know, and it might take a while before that comment shows up. So it's kind of mm -hmm. uh, what's going on in here. But anyway, I I selected the comment from Bjorn here. It's a question, all right? 
<laughs> he asks, where is it that they have sweet popcorn? <laughs> I don't know. I thought, not, I not thought in, that was United not, States. Not in Finland. I'm not, you're not in Finland. <laughs> no. Okay, but I take this not in United States then, because Bjorn is asking. Yeah, yeah. That, he, he's got kind of a, a, a. There's some kind of deep, deep thinking in that. I believe. I don't know what, but uh, I guess we'll hear about that later. Uh, what else do we have? We have some other stuff coming up. I can't. I can't possibly take all of this, but. Uh, uh, about app script. Okay, uh, still Bjorn here. Let's see. Um, I wonder how you you see the the questions. Do you see the questions I select here? Uh, I Did see. You, does, does the, the sweet the popcorn thing? I see that one marked. Which one? Uh, sweet popcorn. It's still marked. Okay. And now, I, now it's uh, big changes happening in app script. All right. It's something like five seconds delay from from uh, when I select them. Until they they become visible, apparently. Yeah, I can read okay. that one. Uh, there are some big changes happening in App Script soon, so all scripts are going to need to be rewritten to some yeah. extent. And of course, this is connected to the what do you call it? Like update of Sheets or Google Sheets or new version or whatever. Uh, they are they are um, working on the Sheets for better or worse. I hope for the better. <laughs> but. Um, yeah. But if, if, yeah, to some extent, that's kind of interesting. I mean, um, hmm. well, it doesn't make sense speculating about that. I guess I definitely know nothing about that. It remains to be yeah. seen what, what's going to happen, I guess. Yeah. If someone it has... Will be some, yeah, go ahead. So uh, it will be interesting to see, well, uh, if we need to rewrite scripts, then it means we have a good opportunity to... Uh, make some th well, make use of things we learned when we started it, started writing the, the scripts, and they maybe grew and got too large. And then, well, at least me, when I do coding projects, I feel at the end, well, at least part uh, past the uh, first fifty percent, I feel that now I know how I should have done this from uh, from the beginning. So I have, sometimes I just restart and do them again. Mm. You mean like there's a good chance to to uh, polish the code in a way? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, you have you have a nice positive view on things. <laughs> I love that. I'm I'm you know like I don't know. Perhaps it's in my in my DNA. Some sometimes I get a bit gloomy. Not about app script, but completely different things. Um, like the weather. Uh, well, weather is okay. Uh, actually, right now we have. Perfect winter weather. I can complain a bit. I can complain about the the uh, the early winter here. Uh, it is awful, just rainy and <laughs> crap, you know. But for quite some time, it's been beautiful. Minus 15 C, minus 20 C, minus 30 C, pretty close. And minus 30 C, uh, you guys uh, on the other side of the pond. That is pretty close to minus 30 F. Minus 30 Fahrenheit, I think. Minus 30 Celsius is something like. Oh, minus 34 Fahrenheit, I think. I think. Yeah. So. I'm not. I'm not googling this or anything. It's just off the top of my head. You know, I still have some knowledge in my noodle here. Um, <laughs> uh, Yuan, do you see um, the comment yeah. from Kim here? Uh, you need to get Lars Arvidsson on at that time discussing uh, Google Apps for Education. How, how on earth do you say that in English? I don't know the the, the uh, acronym. Uh, Google Apps for Education scripting, app scripting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll do. Yeah. Another Swedish guy who knows what he's doing uh, with the uh, app script. That's a fact. Yeah. I click done here. Uh, lots of stuff coming in here. Heaven's sake! How am I going to cope with this? The answer There's is a lot of good I, comments I, I about uh, salaries and, and how Finland is doing in education. You want? Can you select? The, the comments, or is it just me being the host? I think only you can select that. You got one that I should pick? Um, uh, I'm not sure. All of the comments left, I think, deal with uh, comparing education mm. uh, and seeing how education works with um, Oh, man, Finland. that's complicated stuff. It is. That's too complicated stuff for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm wiped out. But there uh, are some interesting links I would like to check out uh, when the uh, 
uh, this broadcast ends. Yeah, the question is um, whether all the comments can be seen uh, at all. I don't think so. Oh, I so it's just you and me comments, seeing the comments. All, well, afterwards, after the fact, I believe only the comments that the host has selected will be visible for, for anyone, right. I think. Mm -hmm. So um, you guys uh, who, who have entered comments and, and we have just uh, like uh, discarded them, sorry about that. Um, that's the way it goes. Um, where was I? I was thinking of um, our fixed ideas. <laughs> or fixed ideas. Anyway, you had this, this thing that, that um, talking about teaching. teaching. Let's go back a little bit from coding to teaching, just a quick one. Um, you were talking about um, the, the lack of time, and I guess that's, that's quite simply a fact. That's a fact. There's so much crap. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So that, um, excuse me, my French. <laughs> there is so much of that stuff um, that it it just makes um, makes it hard to to work. Yeah. Efficiently, uh, I guess there makes you I, sad, and sometimes it makes yeah. you angry. Both at the same time. Sometimes I've noticed. I think anger. Um, I prefer anger over sadness when I get to choose myself. So I yeah, try to yeah. get angry because then yeah. I get energy. Agreed. I can get extremely angry sometimes. Yeah. Uh, definitely. It's a scary side, I think. Um, I'm, I'm a scary side as I am, but when I'm angry, it's <laughs> horrible. <laughs> yeah. um, my idea, remember, I, I mentioned that to you um, sometime earlier, you and that, that I think that, that many things that are not working well in, in Swedish schools are connected to the lack of openness as well. Mm -hmm. um, what do you make out of that? Am I on the wrong track or what? No, I think I, I agree very much. I think that it's all very, uh, all too common that uh, teachers reinvent the wheel over and over again. And we have so much great material and so many good ideas that are being implemented in classrooms in Sweden and in the world, I guess. Uh, and we are not very good at sharing them with each other. So we have to spend a lot of work doing the same thing as others have done before us, and that's that's a shame. Um, and in most cases, this is not because teachers don't want to uh, share things, because most do, but we don't really have the time to do it. And we don't really have the habit either, I guess. No, we don't have the habit either. It's, it's both, it's both and. I agree to that. Uh, being a teacher is very often uh, a solo work. At uh, least it's, it's been a solo work. Lone yeah. wolf, huh? Yeah. This yeah. is my classroom, my students, don't you dare entering here, you know. Perhaps the principal can just open the door carefully and take a peek and mm -hmm. otherwise we just get out of here, you know. That's yeah. a tradition, I think. Yeah. Uh, and that's a shame. Well, that, that's something that could help teachers. Uh, but we need time to, to be able to save time that way. And get a grow a better culture. Yeah. Perhaps we need we need time for the kind of stuff we are doing right now. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I don't I don't know where we take this stuff where this, we take this time from, though. Um, no, we're borrowing I, time. I, I guess we we better not not get into that. Go down into that rabbit <laughs> hole. I think. No, no. Uh, but I feel somehow that that. I mean, the time I put into talking to you, for example, right now, uh, I've just got to take it from somewhere. Uh, it's like, it's like, this is yeah. the su survival kit, for heaven's sake. Yeah, yeah. I've been thinking quite a bit about how I use my time uh, as a teacher because there is not very much time to use. You've been you've been thinking this thing through in a way that's. Amazing! I've very rarely seen anything like that. Oh wow! Thank you. And and that's what I actually want to to say. Well, my my point here because I think that reflecting on what you do and try to learn from what's happening around you is the most important thing you have as a teacher. When I started as a teacher one and a half year ago, uh, I had well quite a lot to do. And spent a lot of time at, at my work and also worked with school stuff at home 
Um, and eventually I, I realized that I don't, I, I can't go on like this. I have to cut down on my work somehow. And I decided to cut down on how I do uh, assessment uh, uh, of students. Uh, and I knew that I was, well, that meant that I can't be doing assessment as good as well as I want to do. I will do them in a way that I can't say to someone else that this is good because it, it won't be. But that's something I had to do. And now, after this winter, I'm um, trying to reduce my time at work even more. I'm approaching 100%. Um, and now I feel that my teaching is not as good as I would like it to be. Mm, yeah. But I still take time to do reflection. I write uh, a log every week on my computer. I blog every once in a while, uh, talking to you, uh, reading what other teachers do, uh, talking to colleagues. Uh, that is so important. If we don't do that, uh, we cannot improve as teachers. We cannot learn how to be good teachers. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. And, and you log every hour that is work-related, right? I do, I do. And I log differently, well, have two different accounts. One for the time I spend at work, at school, and one that I spend at home on work-related things. And it's been quite a few hours. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. I mm -hmm. can imagine. I have think I've been thinking about that um, in the past, I might say, uh, about logging the work-related time. But uh, soon I noticed it would be too depressing. But I don't know. Perhaps I should have done it anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess I should have. I guess, I guess well, it's a really good thing if you can do that. There are so many things that you want to do that you think that you should do because it's really not that big thing to log your time or to uh, start every lesson with an interesting question that starts students thinking about this topic that you want to discuss or something. But uh, you can't do all of them. You really yeah. can't. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, it's a sad fact, but it's, it's a fact. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, <laughs> sad. Wow. <laughs> sad panda. <laughs> I uh, guess what I think we've um, we've covered quite a bit of ground here. I'd say. Yeah. Oh, but one thing that I would like to say. Um, you can say two. I can say two. Okay, I'll start with this one and I'll see what the other one will be. Um, uh, having skills in use in how to use a computer and how to write programs, like doing uh, Google scripts or other kind of programming has helped me so much as a teacher. It has saved me loads of time. Uh, not only that I, I'm pretty good at finding tools that help me doing what I would like, but I can also spot that what I'm doing right now is repetitive work. This is something that a computer should be able to do. And then I can try to find a, a program or an app that, that does that. And or if that's not possible, I can also try to, to create one myself. And that has helped me so much, saved me so, so many hours. Yeah, I mean, obviously you are a pro at this. You are a pro programmer, so <laughs> most teachers are not. So oh. you have like, it's, it's, uh, it must be incredible how much how much time you can you can you know like put into something really important instead of doing like you said oh, oops doing all that 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 stuff uh, over and over again the the way most teachers do and and for for again most teachers they have no way of coping with that they they, they can't mm. fix that that stuff with with you know no. programs or whatnot mm -hmm. so. Uh, the other day I was, uh, uh, a group from this school was visiting another school in Stockholm to discuss how they were using Chromebooks because we uh, will be implementing a one-to-one -one policy pretty soon here. Okay, interesting. And we've been we've been running one-to-one, -one, uh, I think, almost th three years. Uh, that's, yeah. a, that's a separate yeah. 
that's a separate story completely, actually. No? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, math and physics teachers at the other, other school had one complaint about uh, uh, Chromebooks, and that was that you can't really do uh, regression analysis in Google spreadsheets. That is, uh, fitting uh, points of data, x and y values, to uh, say a, a second order polynomial, which doesn't make sense to a lot of people when they say that, but it's something you do in, in math and physics pretty often. Okay, even even on on the uh, on the level your students are are studying. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, and I knew that you can write code for uh, Google spreadsheets, and I know that it's possible to write code that makes regression analysis. So for me, this was not something that's undoable. It's just that it hasn't been done yet. So uh, it's something that can be solved, and now it is solved as well. So, All right. so that's one, one way you can just make use of computer knowledge as a teacher. Yeah. Talking about Chromebooks, uh, mm -hmm. did you have a chance to, to uh, listen to the or see the, the interview I, I did um, with Carl yesterday? Um, no. Yeah, from uh, Jensen Education. They, they had this uh, 4,000 plus Chromebook launch uh, yeah, last year. Wow. Um, kind of interesting. He, he was in London connecting through this hotel Wi-Fi, and but it, it worked. It worked. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting. Um, have you been fooling around with Chromebooks? Just a quick one here. Uh, just very little. We have a wagon with Chromebooks here that I've borrowed, uh, well, a handful of times mm -hmm. to use in class. Yeah, yeah. But Obviously, I guess uh, Chromebooks are very, very closely connected to Google Apps and and uh, I, I guess there is doesn't make sense at all thinking of, of, of some kind of a, a Chromebooks implementation without apps running in the background, huh? Uh, no, no, it doesn't. But we use uh, Google Drive uh, here at after school. It's one of the tools that we've decided to use. So it's we really so, well. So you have apps apps already up and running. Yeah, we have. Yeah. yeah, it's just that our students don't have computers. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's the that's the correct way of doing it, actually. I mean, you have the the framework up and running, and and then you just plug in the hardware, and off you go. Um, mm -hmm. We <laughs> we did it the other way around, I guess, ah. in a way. Uh, we had tons of hardware, but um, well, the the uh, workflow. This is this is the big favorite of of Bjorn Behrens, The workflow. The workflow was. Uh, in my view, uh, well, close to non-existent. So uh, in the end, I, I uh, got started with Google Apps on my own, which took heck of a long time because I'm not so good at that. But no one would have done it otherwise. I, I just did it, you know, completely selfish. I had to get it started, otherwise I'd, you know, go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I did it. But uh, well. That shouldn't be the way things are done, actually. No, no. But um, it's good that teachers experiment, and teachers should be able to experiment and and try new things in, in, with computers or just something else. Uh, uh, but it shouldn't be well. The school shouldn't rely on teachers doing that for having a, a base level of, I don't know, uh, file management or or something. Yep, a fact. Mm -hmm. um, we got started a bit late. What, what's your favorite tea? My favorite tea? My favorite tea is Earl Grey cream. Okay, not bad. It's like uh, <laughs> almost <laughs> like like uh, candy stuff. Huh? Yeah, is well, it a bit, yeah. bit sweet? It's a bit sweet. Um, uh, it's a bit more... Um, Tastes a bit more, I would say, than standard Earl Grey. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of going, moving to uh, non-flavored tea, just having pure green tea or Oolong tea. Or very good, very good. Yeah. I think I'm not uh, there I, yet. I have, <laughs> of course, the. I mean, if if it, if there's a sweet flavor to tea, that's fine with me. If, but mm -hmm. you know, as long as it's it's not in the bread. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your other, favorite other, tea? Other, Otherwise, I'm I'm more a coffee guy, you know. So uh, I'm I'm a coffee nut. It's kind of weird, though. Um, I don't know. 
I, you know, I, I love espresso, but heck, uh, here at school, this is, uh, you know, like instant coffee, and mm -hmm. down it goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> By yeah, the see, gallon. By the gallon. I see a kettle uh, in in uh, in the background behind uh, beside your door, next to your door. You uh, see what? Uh, and button cooker. Oh, I see. I, yeah. I I was worried something weird is showing up here. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, I assume that yeah, makes there, you would be there's a kettle, all right. Yeah, what and cooker. Um, I got this um, huge room, like uh, uh, <laughs> four by two meters or something like wow. that. Uh, but it's it's uh, it's a great great it's a great great thing to have. Uh, so far, so good. They haven't kicked me out from here, so we'll see. You never know what happens in the future, but. <laughs> Uh, good luck. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, we got we got started a bit late, but I think we've been going on for quite. It doesn't it doesn't feel like we've been no. doing doing this for a long time. No. Been, time is what relative like uh, this this uh, Einstein stuff. Yeah. Some, yeah. Sometimes it just whoosh, you know, it goes amazingly fast, and and that's yeah. the way it's been. Yeah. During our talk here, that's weird. I would like to see a, see a solid theory, physics theory, to describe that. <laughs> uh, is there a connection to uh, teaching and education somehow? Do you think? I think there is. I think there is. There might be. Um, huh. Any any famous last words? I guess we'll be wrapping this thing up. You want? Um, no, I don't think I have any. Famous last. Uh, well, it's been fun. It's been fun like crazy, uh, yeah. and uh, I'm I'm counting on you that that um, we'll do stuff like this again uh, somehow. Uh, there are different possibilities. Uh, there are endless possibilities. Endless possibilities. And uh, this this thing is just I mean, blows the mind. Mm -hmm. It's just incredible what we can do, yeah. um, like this live streaming thing and partly as, as a, a tool for, for well professional development it, it sounds like oh, well that's what it's about actually I think it's about professional development and uh, of yeah. course doing this stuff with with the students as well I mean talking about endless possibilities yeah 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 it's it is exciting mm -hmm. it is it is hmm. Um, okay. Um, guess Thank you very much for, for this opportunity. It's been great talking to you. It's been really, really, really tons of fun. Uh, uh, lots of things uh, I'm, I'm thinking about right now, and, and there's complete chaos here in the upstairs, so uh, mm -hmm. doesn't even make sense trying to uh, say anything about that right now. But hopefully in the end, sometime in the future, there will become something... Um, Useful out of out of that that mess, um, tons of tons of fun definitely you want, mm -hmm. and um, what is going to happen from now on with the um, with the um, hangouts I'm I'm involved in and Tina most often uh, my my code driver from Finland uh, this the interview thing there will be quite a few interviews uh, coming um, I would think. Uh, in near future, um, I have a couple of names uh, that are, um, I think, pretty well known, especially in, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And um, of well, m getting more and more known, I think, uh, globally as well. Like uh, like Zach Gilbert, uh, the the gaming guru, uh, who was mm -hmm. in our show last time. I'll be doing a one-on-one -on -one with him as well sometime in the not very distant future. And uh, there will be one with a, a principal called Eric Schenninger. I hope I'm not uh, massacring, his, his messing up his name completely here. Um, really interesting, interesting uh, ideas and thoughts uh, put into practice, actually. Uh, I believe... Um, not far from New York, in the New York area, some somewhere. Mm -hmm. He is an author as well, so uh, looking forward to that. And um, uh, then uh, I think I'll be talking about 
uh, flipped learning quite a bit with mm -hmm. uh, with a guy called Troy Cockrum uh, soon uh, mm -hmm. time span a couple of weeks from now tops I think and um, uh, he's been doing some interesting things with flipping the classroom mm -hmm. as well so um, really really interesting stuff coming up plus a um, can I say that already I think I'll I'll go out on a limb here yeah. but there will be there will be a uh, surprise guest uh, that um, or two at least one uh, very very well known in the global perspective I'd say too <laughs> I, I love this stuff that that I want to talk to many people in, in education. I, I learn awfully a lot about that. And it can be basically anyone interested in, in learning, teaching, whatever, connected to education somehow. Uh, my colleagues, f friends, uh, superstars uh, from abroad, uh, great mix, I think. That's, that's what I, I want to have. So. Um, I think you guys, all the thousands of viewers, stay tuned. Uh, the fun just goes on and on, I think. <laughs> and once again, Yuan, thanks for joining. Thank you. And uh, see you soon on air again. Yeah. <laughs> Signing off from the North Pole. Take good care, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>